Mina, oh how you say mas? Jesus freaking gamer here. On to Psalm 73, we're now in book 3 of the Psalms. And Psalm 73 is probably one of my favorites because it answers an age-old question. Why do the wicked prosper? The flip-flop side of that is why do good men suffer? And that, I think, is answered very well in Job, which is one of my favorite books in the Bible. This one answers the reverse side of that question. Why do the wicked prosper if God's the God of the universe and he doesn't like sin? Why do these men and women, you know, have a good time? Why is, is their life easy? And it, answer, it answers it briefly, but it answers it well. And it answers it thought-provokingly. So let me just get into that. I'm going to start with verse 1. Truly God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Now a lot of, a lot of believers have looked at this issue, and some have walked away from God, and some have had very serious doubts as to why are these horrible people having such a good time? Why isn't God getting on their case? Why isn't he taking care of this? Why isn't he dealing with this? And, it, and it's caused some people to slip up. Verse 4, For there are no pangs in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than heart could wish. He acknowledges full well. Not only are the wicked not actively suffering for their sins, they're actually doing very, very, very well. A lot of them are prospering abundantly. A lot of them feel just fine. A lot of them have very painless deaths. So where, what, what's the deal? What's going on here? I'm going to skip straight to the answer. I definitely encourage you to read this entire psalm. Obviously, I'd re encourage you to read the entire book of Psalms, as well as the entire Old Testament, as well as the entire Bible, period. But if I had to recommend a few things in particular, I think Psalm 73 would be on my top 10 list. It's just so good. And the answer is a brief one. Again, it, it's brief, it's to the point, and it makes you think. At least, makes me think, anyway. And it's verses 18 through 20. Surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they are brought to desolation as in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors. As a dream when one awakes, so, Lord, when you awake, you shall despise their image. Now, there are questions that are there. Um, well, doesn't, didn't he just contradict himself earlier? You know, there are no pains in their death. They're not plagued like other men. Their eyes bulge with abundance. Um, where, where is this destruction and desolation and utterly being consumed? Where, where is this stuff? It wasn't mean, so Lord, when you awake, doesn't the God of Israel never sleep? And the brief answer to this, um, this could probably be a 30-minute message. I don't know if I'll do one on it or not. Maybe, maybe not. We'll, we'll see what the future holds. The quick answer is... God will put sin to rest. God will destroy the wicked. The timing isn't always immediate. There is oftentimes a chance to, uh, there's a time when God lingers in mercy and grace, gives them a chance to repent. For some of these wicked people will repent and turn from their evil ways. And there is a verse in the New Testament that talks about God lingering in mercy, giving them a chance to repent. Google is your best friend. And there's also the stories where, I'm going to use Pharaoh as the example here, God allows these wicked men to prosper for a time, and then when the time comes, God puts them in their place, and God actually gains glory through their destruction and through their putting down. That's in the book of Exodus, and it's around the time of the ten plagues to give you a little frame of reference as to where to look for that story about Pharaoh. Once again, Google's your best friend. God's timing is everything in this answer. The wicked will not prosper forever. There is definitely going to come a day of reckoning when all the mountains are leveled and all the valleys are raised up. And in the meantime, I'm thankful to God that he gives the wicked a chance to repent. Otherwise, this wicked man could not have repented. And I'm also glad that sometimes God takes his time 
And through their very sinfulness, through their very rebellion against God, God glorifies himself and gives himself a good name and a good reputation among men who need to believe in him for their salvation through the destruction of those wicked. It's not a completely clear-cut answer. There's no way it would be otherwise. This wouldn't be a question. It wouldn't be a debate. And people would not lose their faith over it. It's not... It's something that does need to be thought about. It's something that does need to be reckoned with. So I encourage you to read this psalm. Maybe if you think it's worthwhile, think of the words that I've said here today. This psalm brought me a lot of peace. Just knowing, For me, just knowing someone acknowledged the problem, and it's in the Bible, that was a huge help. And then to think, you know, one day the wicked are going to get what's coming to them. Even, and even if that is only in hell. Surely, surely that is enough punishment. Surely no one would say that that wasn't sufficient punishment for any level of wicked deed. Something to think about, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.